Hey guys and welcome back to my channel and today I'm decided to make a little guide on people who are deciding to play World of Warships in 2020. Now, obviously the game has been out for quite some time but there's always going to be people who want to play the game or start the game from scratch. So today I'm going to go through some of the basics and to be honest with you this isn't going to be an in-depth guide, it's not going to be talking about armour thicknesses, over penetrations, all the jargon you probably hear when you watch people play this game. So with me it's from a more casual gamer point of view, I have sunk about 600 odd hours into the game so I definitely know more way around the game, um, but it's definitely going to be in a more relaxed casual way. For all you gamers out there like me who tend to play games a bit more casually than some of the more competitive and Twitch users. I'm going to go through each step and show you guys on how to start and what worked for me and what advice I can give you. So yeah, see you in a tick. Right guys, um, after figuring out that there's some kind of bug as I have the game through Steam, I can't actually create a new account and get it on it so I'm going to use my own and I've kind of manufactured it a little bit to make it look like what you would see when you first start the game. So first of all I'm going to go through the actual port itself. Uh, the background may be different, don't worry, you can change it up here. Um, so when you start, you will start with three tier ones, um, I believe, as far as I remember. Um, and you'll have the Japanese tier one, an American tier one and a German tier one. Now these are all cruisers and you know this by the symbol which is the, I guess, boat shape with a diagonal line through it, one diagonal line. Um, if I go to the tech tree quickly, um, I'll show you that each country has a different tech tree line, what it's called, and each line represents a different type of ship. So once you do get past the tier 1 cruiser and you get to the 2-2 cruiser, as you can see, you can choose to go for a tier 2 destroyer a destroyer being a triangle. When you get to tier 3 cruiser you can then go to a tier 3 battleship which is the boat shape with two lines. And then of course when you get to tier 4 on the destroyer line you can choose to go down a secondary path or you can choose to go down an aircraft carrier. The aircraft carrier go down in tiers of 2 so 4, 6, 8 and 10 rather than for example on the cruisers which is 1 all the way down to 10. Of course each tree is different, so the USA they have a line of cruisers that splits into two for example and the UK they also have cruisers that split into two. Some nations that you click on for example Pan-Asia will only have destroyers and this I guess subtly reflects the history of um, warfare during World War II in terms that certain powers didn't have the amount of ships and the amount of designs that other nations did. For example, the UK, German, Russian, American and Japanese navies were much larger than the rest. And the Italians have the cruisers. Now you'll notice there is these gold ships on the right. Now these are premium ships. And what I mean by premium ships is in the top right hand corner Yours should all be zero when you first start, um, and you should only have these two, I believe, and um, this one comes later. So the doubloons is basically the on-game currency, and this on-game currency can be bought um, to either buy what are called premium ships, as you can see, 4,700 doubloons, or to buy anything in the store, for example, flags, you could buy camos, it can be all sorts of various things that are in the store at the time and these credits are how you buy in-game ships or parts for ships so for example if I go on the equipment for this ship and um, you can see all the parts here so once I have this ship I'll be able to buy the parts if I have enough experience so that's just a quick rundown of the tech tree and what you start with which is three tier one cruisers I don't want to go over this too much because you do start in a very basic port so you do get the three ships and when it comes to all the details about the ship and the captain all that stuff comes a little bit later so 
for now what we're going to do is we're going to head into a game with one of these ships and when you do start you won't be able to choose to go against other people you will start with co-op battle and the co-op battle all that means is it will be you and other people against solely AI ships and this will be that way until you get to a certain level where the game will then, then let you do random battles which is against obviously PvP. So yeah I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you into a game and show you a few of the controls um, not complicate things too much because I know a lot of you guys probably don't want the ins and outs of every little thing plus the video will go on forever. It's something that you'll pick up so let's get to the basics. Hey guys now we're in a game and there's 10 seconds left until we start the game. Um, as you can see on the left hand side of the screen is a compass and also a picture of the ship itself and the ship itself in green is effectively your health bar so as the health goes down it changes colour to an amber and then a red obviously the red meaning you haven't got much health left next to that or below that should I say obviously next to the compass you can see full three quarters half quarter stop and full now this is used with the W and S key and it's W to go up press it once to go to quarter and as you can see the ship's moving forward you only have to press this you don't have to hold the W key to actually move the ship as you press it again it increases the speed obviously but, um, the engine is being powered up even more three quarters and then full and then you can do vice versa go all the way down to full and as you can see ships they don't stop as quickly as most vehicles they actually need a bit of time to stop so don't forget that when you first start the game guys um, put it into full can be a harder stop than obviously stop and there you go the ship is now in reverse there's only one reverse setting which is full so as you can see on the right bottom corner is a minimap and on the minimap you can see where you are located with the white arrow and where your teammates are with the green and obviously enemies that have been spotted with red and as you can see circle in my arrow there is a blue dotted line and there's also a white line so I'm going to move and as you can see in the middle as well when I go W for left or D for right as you can see it moves an arrow underneath now that is just me turning the ship and like like going in forward and reverse when I let go of it it takes a little while to actually straighten up but these ones you do hold because they're your turning it's your rudder now as you can see in the middle of my screen it says detected and that's going back to the map you see the blue dotted line and you can see inside or in between the blue dotted line and me is that enemy ship there so that is your detection now the white line is the range of your guns so as I as you can see when I move the cursor down and up there's a little white circle on the minimap that goes up and that's just to show where your shells will land you don't need to use a minimap for that it's just a, a little trick just to see where you're aiming and in relation to the ships now the actual mouse or the cursor, apologies. These are where your guns will follow. So as you can see, the guns are a lot slower than your cursor. So for example, as you can see, they've just turned green, orange. Orange means that they're not in line with your cursor. And green means they are, and they're ready to fire. So for example, if I press the left mouse button now, if I press it once, it will shoot one gun. And as you can see, we have two turrets with two guns each, so that makes four. Or if I double click, it shoots all four. So it's just a quick way of getting a salvo off. Of course, you can click it once, then once again, then once again. Now to aim in, it's shift, and you only have to press shift in, and then you can do the same, which is, as you can see, that ship's there. As the ship is moving, you can see that, of course, if I was to shoot a shell there, 
the shell will land behind the ship. Now that is because the ship is moving from left to right. So this is where your judgement comes into play. So you may want to guess there. And then we'll see if it hits the ship. I just missed. So, when it comes to aiming and shooting for ships, as you can see, you can see the white line, and then obviously you can see your green reticle. So, you can aim in and out with the... Uh, <laughs> the name's gone out of my head. The roller thingy. But yeah, so for example, if I was to put the bottom of the white line on the bottom of the ship, he's quite conveniently going from left to right for me. But if I do that, it will hit somewhere on the waterline, because you're aiming on the waterline. So let's turn, get a little bit closer, and then see if we can hit the ship for you. So when something's coming towards you, you definitely want to aim down because by the time that ship gets to where you're aiming, you'll be dead on target. So I can just keep shooting, and then as you can see at the bottom of my screen, my high explosive rounds, which is the only rounds you get on a tier 1, are reloading. I'm just going to keep firing at him, and just doing a little bit in front to give him a bit of lead because of where he's travelling. So I always look at where he's moving. He's moving now a little bit left to right, so I'll go a little bit down because he's coming towards me, and then keep firing. ship destroyed. So another couple of things you might want to know at the bottom of the screen the two lines are actually just another indicator for your guns so as that orange cursor comes into play and goes green it means your number one gun is ready to fire. Below that you've got your rounds or your shells which at the moment are high explosive later on you will get armor piercing rounds as well um, but we'll talk about that at a different time and as you can see you can see two canisters and a wrench and you press R to do that and that is a heal so that could be anything from flooding to fires anything that's giving you continuous damage on your ship so if I get hit by a high explosive round off one of these ships and it sets me on fire and I believe you can have up to four fires I believe depending on how many times you get hit you can press R and it will extinguish the fires on your ship now in terms of the tactics of when to use it or not, that's another thing for later game. I'm just going to teach you the basics of the ship. Now as you can see, there's a gun at the front and a gun at the back. Obviously with um, two barrels on each. So yeah, it's four guns, not two guns, but you know what I mean, two turrets. And when I'm showing a ship my full side, all my guns can now fire. Now, if I turn my ship towards a target, when it gets there, <laughs> you'll see that one of my guns at the bottom is green and one is orange and that's because my back turret cannot fire, I can't shoot through my ship. Now don't always say this is a negative, in later games going bar one as we call, as going forward onto a ship, can be very good in deflecting certain rounds and such. But in terms of lower tier games, just try to keep moving and turning and trying to get your guns all firing. So we've got a lot of enemy ships there. So we're just going to keep swerving. Took a couple of hits, but nothing quite serious. So, as you can see, in the top right hand corner, which is up here, you can see 6041. That is the damage I've caused two ships so far. And then these are ribbons. So these are kind of indicators of what you've done so far so I've hit enemy targets 30 times with my main battery guns I've incapacitated an enemy ship's module so a module is just a part of the ship for example the guns or if you want to be more specific the artillery and then you've got things like the engine um, all sorts of things but we'll go into that at a later time I've set one fire because I'm using high explosive rounds so I've set a fire in one of the ships and I've sunk one ship. As an exercise, this gives you a little bit of a gist on how to control the ship.
for example, if I wanted to stop behind this island, I'll put it in full reverse, because I want the ship to slow down. It'll gradually get there. So, as you can see, in later games, you might not want to uh, be going full hammer all the time. So as you saw there, I actually shot over that hill. So, your reticle there, when you're aiming, for example, if he goes behind this, so as you can see, he's travelling from right to left behind that island, and I'm behind an island too. As you can see, there's a little white mountain icon, and that means that if I fire, either this mountain or that mountain is blocking whatever I'm going to hit on the other side. So if I fire, as you can see from the arc of the shells, it's going to hit straight into an island. And as you can see, if I aim off, it won't. So always keep that in mind if you're firing from behind an island, which you can do. You just have to be a certain distance away, so I can fire over an island there. As you can see, the arc goes over the island. So just bear that in mind when you are starting out about that little reticle. So here, I can actually shoot over the island, because it's so low down. And as you see, flight's right over the top. Hits a ship right in the side. So these are just little tips that I think would help um, for you. Don't worry too much at tier one, as to be honest with you, there's not really much to know in terms of angling and such like that. Of course, the rule of thumb is if people are firing at you, it's always good to turn away from them or turn towards them. And that's just to make your target smaller. As you can see, they can only see the back of my ship. But for now, don't worry too much about that. So yeah, that's pretty much all you need to know to begin with, guys. And one other thing, as you can see, around their little symbol is a white kind of crosshair. And that just means that's the ship I'm targeting. So if I want to target another ship, and I still want to aim in, it'll automatically change. So there you go guys, that's the end of one game. And for now, just ignore that number there. What we're going to focus on are these two. So I've got 11,846, I'll just call them coins, but we call them credits in game. So I've got 11,846, and then I've got 100 of these little stars here. So these are experience, XP, and you earn these each ship. So I've got 100 experience for this ship, which is the Hashidanti. I don't know if I've said that right, but you know what I mean. So we'll go back to port. Now we're back in the port. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on my ship. You don't have to do it this way. You can just go straight to equipment and I'm going to press equipment. Now on the modules, what you can see is obviously my gun. Then you've got the hull, then you've got the gunfire control system, and then you've got the propulsion, or the engine. And above it is actually our ship. And as you can see, ship XP 100, which I got from the last game. So, when you do start to earn experience, there will actually be an experience number underneath here. Obviously I've already got the ship. So apologies for that, but there'll be, it may say 350 or some, something like that. So if you play a few games, get about 400, that means you can research that ship. So you research ships with experience. Once you've researched the ship, it will ask if you want to buy it. So when you purchase the ship, it will be 69,000 credits. Obviously, I've got enough for that, but you'd obviously have to earn that through battles. And that's how you move on from tier one to tier 2. So that's all for now guys, it's just a little brief explanation of what happens when you first get the game and I'll make another video on what comes next and what kind of things you need to start looking out for when you get more into the game guys, okay? So enjoy getting into it guys and hopefully see you out there, bye for now.